Ray Todoroki is one strong woman. What's up guys, it's Truth Hero, and welcome back to another My Hero Academia chapter review. Boku no Hero Academia chapter 300 of the manga. 300 chapters of My Hero Academia thus far. So, first and foremost, Horikoshi, congratulations. You now have enough chapters to raise a small army. But on this 300th chapter of My Hero Academia, we get the downfall of Endeavor, villains on the rise, stains back, all the heroes are pretty much gone, and, 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 Rei Todoroki makes an appearance. Just, wow. The chapter opens with a grand summation of this last arc and everything that has happened to hero society, with the villains on the loose, Dobby confronting Endeavor, and BAM, the mere existence of Nomu shaking everyone's inner peace. This on top of everything causes it to all come crashing down. Very interesting here that the fear of Nomu is the straw that broke the camel's back per se. And I think this can only happen in a society where the heroes have actually just completely given up. That has to happen before this fear can really invade people's minds. You need a foundation of, you know, villains attacking the schools, uh, other villains on the loose because of prison breaks and what happened at Tartarus, then, you know, All Might vs. All for One, and now, of course, Dobby revealing Endeavor's secrets and everything that Shigaraki did in this final battle, and of course, the Paranormal Liberation Front really getting on people's radar with, you know, their language about maybe you should defend yourselves, maybe you shouldn't rely on heroes, and now that the heroes have retired, this is the only way that Fear of Nomu could really set people off. They've seen Nomu before, but now that there's no heroes and no hope, yeah, we always dealt with villains, but now we gotta worry about genetic abominations attacking us? I mean, what are we supposed to do? Even the senior citizen samurai hero Yoroi Musha says he's going to retire, and he comments on the damage done to hero society by the villains, and really, that's allowed to be done to society by the heroes. He says that the hero's negligence and ineffectiveness at their jobs, it's something that should be punished, and it should be nothing short of seppuku. But he's not going to do that, obviously. But it is a curious window into the minds of heroes, and for the first time we see that a lot of them are feeling shame. If all these heroes are suddenly ashamed to show themselves and to be in the spotlight and take criticism, then perhaps it harps back to the original problem in My Hero Academia, which was fake heroes. Heroes that only do this for fame, accolades, money, status, and maybe even having an easy life and an easy job. Oh, I'll just, you know, arrest a few common criminals and call myself the champion. Call myself one of the top dogs of hero society. But then when something serious happens and people want to depend on you and you realize that it was all an act, you turn into a coward pretty quickly. And it's kind of ironic because I actually don't believe this samurai hero was one of the fake ones. He did his duty with youthful vigor his entire career. He's basically older than All Might and Endeavor combined, so I'd give the man a break. But when people are out to spite you, it really doesn't matter. Also, young or old, ineffective or effective throughout your entire career, it really doesn't matter if you're retiring in the very most dire time of need. I mean, this is fourth quarter, fourth down, four seconds to go. Go for the touchdown. Don't just walk off the field. Also, this guy is like ancient, and hey, we're all afraid of death, but really, why is he retiring? What does he have to be truly concerned with? And if you're retiring in the most pressing time of need, it doesn't set a good example for the other younger heroes who can just look to their elder and say, well, if he's out, I'm out. It's just not a good look all around. If all the heroes start to show shame, then you're perceived as cowards and ineffective by the residents and civilians of hero society. And this is just what happened to Wash when he shows up late to a scene where villains attacked civilians, and those civilians tried desperately to defend themselves with the support items that they had. It's just too little, too late. 
Ironically, this is the same group of villains that Bakugo and Todoroki helped stop after they got their licenses, and it just goes to show that even minor villains breaking out of prison is a big deal for society. Everyone's all concerned about Tartarus and these major, major villains, but think about the small towns, think about the suburbs, think about all these other communities that these little villains came from and now are terrorizing once again. Just like Redestro and the Liberation Army oh so smartly predicted, if you prepare people to fight for themselves and place those support items and avenues just within their reach, when times get desperate, they will eventually grab onto those. And now we're seeing it. There's no heroes around, and what are people doing? They're trying, at least, to stand up for themselves, and they're believing in what the Liberation Army said, and maybe what the villains said. This level of distrust among the heroes, this is what's driving this. Even if no hero left and they all fought courageously, it wouldn't matter. There have been too many times like the Deka City incident where people were convinced that heroes were not doing their job, they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing, they're not acting heroically. So eventually if you push people like this and you keep attacking them with villains even if you're engineering that, they're gonna wanna stand up for themselves, protect themselves, naturally, and they're gonna form groups and maybe even vigilantes and some, no shocker here, will probably join the villains because if you can't beat them and you're tired of your neighborhood being ransacked, join them. Speaking of the vigilante types on the rise, this is a good time to talk about Stain. If the heroes aren't retiring, then we can always count on the return of Stain, the hero killer, to help this new villain world cull through the last remaining brave pillars of peace and justice. Ironically, Stain's desire to rid the world of fake heroes kinda lines up with Shigaraki's plans to take over and destroy hero society. So perhaps these two have more in common than they think they do. I get that Stain doesn't like villains per se, he's not a fan of All for One or Shigaraki becoming a villain king, and he does respect All Might, which we'll get into in a bit too. But for now, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe Shigaraki can sit back and watch Stain pick off a few fake heroes that he just can't get right now. <laughs> we know Stain hates the fake heroes, and I'm sure he's glad to see a lot of these people retire. He only really respected All Might. I wonder what he thinks about that sign around the All Might statue. I am not here. But with the changing of the number one, two, and three hero because of everything that's happened due to All Might's retirement, Endeavor, and other heroes being killed or leaving, does Stain now respect the current number one hero? Which, if Endeavor is still healing, maybe that's him, but what about Best Genist? How does Stain feel about him? He did something very heroic. He basically sacrificed his body and played dead just to trick the villains. I would have a hard time finding anyone that didn't think that was unheroic or very, you know, undutiful to your job as a hero. I mean, what more can you do besides sacrifice your life for the good of people than doing something like Best Genus did? What does Stain think about Hawks? Because Hawks was the exact type of person that Stain did not like. Yet, Hawks was very heroic in these arcs, even if he did kill twice. So, could Stain actually have newfound respect for people like Best Genus and Hawks and maybe Endeavor? Could he actually help the heroes in some way? By the way, this sign hanging on the All Might statue saying, I am not here, best touch in the entire chapter. You maybe didn't even need anything explaining what's happened to people. You didn't need the scene with Wash. You could have just shown that. And some people may be upset. I get it. This is not All Might's fault. You might say, wow, that is some disrespect on All Might's name. But you know what? I'd say deal with it. Because the civilians now have to deal with all these villains. Just a great touch here. I'm not sure why Stain specifically wanted to meet with All Might before everything that happened with Tartarus went down. I can't imagine these two would have a lot in common. But I get the feeling that All Might sort of predicted things would happen like this after he retired, and talking with Stain might be a very refreshing perspective. If you think about it, Stain was trying to show the flaw in hero society with fake heroes. He was trying to let the heroes know that they're not being true. They're not being heroic, only All Might is, and when All Might retires, what's going to be left of our protectors? And unfortunately, his message 
didn't really come across. I had bad methods, of course, but now, now the message is loud and clear. Will Stain actually help the heroes? I mean, he won't have to kill many since they're all retiring right now. And also, what does Stain think about people like Deku and Bakugo? Are they now the true heroes of Hero Society? Will Stain actually help the heroes in some way against the villains in Shigaraki? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. I think Stain needs to talk to All Might. Something's going to happen between these two characters. Shame, distrust, and now blame on all the heroes. Or should I say, one hero above all. Endeavor. It's all your fault. We transition to Endeavor, who is just beside himself, thinking about how Dobby knew he would live after this attack, thinking about how everything he's done was selfish, his entire past, and about no matter how strong a hero he is, or how horrible Dobby may be, he can't fight his own son. Even though I'm alive, Endeavor is dead. And with this line, this cherry on top of the crumbling Hero Society Sunday, the villains have officially served us the It's Our World Now ice cream. And it's cold. Endeavor's collapse represents the final piece in the plan. All Might retired, now Endeavor, the number one hero, broken beyond repair. Who's going to lead Hero Society? Best Genist? A guy who barely has a real body? Hawks? No. There's no one left. Luckily, his other sons, Shoto and Natsuo, he doesn't have to fight, and they're here at the hospital to see their dad. Oh, wait, he's crying. Endeavor says, All the regret, all the guilt for my crimes, it's all too much, it's too late, it's weighing on me. Now my heart is... Your heart is what? Says Ray Todoroki. Ladies and gentlemen, name a stronger woman, I'll wait. Regrets? Guilt? All those feelings are weighing on our hearts, and much more than yours. I came to talk about our family... and Toya. Oh boy. Rei does not have to be here right now, but she chooses to come to mend her family and maybe more than this. What keys me into this is that she has the all-important cherished and treasured flower that Endeavor gave her. Obviously, she wants to talk about their family in light of what has transpired with Toya, but potentially she wants to talk to Endeavor about their relationship as parents to their children and Toya, and maybe, just maybe, their relationship as husband and wife. Now I got a bit of a rant here. I know what some people are going to say. Oh, how dare Horikoshi bring back Rei to her abusive husband. That's not what's happening here, okay? I agree, all right? If there is a chance in frozen fiery hell for Endeavor and Rei to get back together, Endeavor is not only gonna have to mend his relationship with every child of his at this hospital, He's probably going to have to bring back Toyo Todoroki on a silver platter to his mother and obviously has a lot of explaining to do, all right? That, that is not happening here. Don't think a bunch of flowers and letters are going to change Ray's opinion of her husband that has done horrible things in the past. She brought the flower because it's a token of, you know, them communicating. But really, it's about Endeavor, Ray, no matter how they feel about each other, they love their children and they love their family. So... They want to they wanna discuss what exactly happened with Toya and what's going on with their family between Natsuo, Shoto, Fuyumi, and trying to just communicate this situation out. Let's not forget that Endeavor has been trying to mend things with every person in his family and now it seems like a good opportunity for Rei to help this process along. Maybe by Endeavor stating what exactly happened to Toya honestly, this could be a good first step for him to making amends with everyone and for them all to understand that some tragedy befell their family with Dobby and Toya, whether Endeavor was the cause or not. And maybe some of you still won't like this idea, but at the very least you can take comfort in the fact that Rei is here primarily for the whole Toya thing. She wants to know what happened. I really like the idea that Rei now has a very important piece to facilitate in Endeavor's story. She will make sure that his redemption is not only him climbing back to the position of number one hero, but it's first and foremost climbing back to the position of a father and someone who takes care of his kids 
and can be a leader in their family. She has the unique ability to hold his feet to the fire per se and make sure that he handles his personal business so that he can therefore rise from the ashes again and be a hero. I mean, she's not going to take any of his crap, you know? Ask Shoto. You don't want to be on Ray's bad side. Too soon? Is that bad timing on that? Endeavor first has to redeem himself as a man and then redeem himself as the number one hero. I really like that idea. His fall from grace was both from Hero Society and his son, and now his redemption will be both those things in tandem. Also, if the heroes are going to ever rise again, they need Endeavor to be that phoenix and rise from the ashes, and hopefully Hawks can help us along. In the last chapter, I totally got it wrong. I thought Hawks was going to kill Endeavor or something, but he actually just wants to talk to him about heroism and the effect Endeavor had on his life. Maybe he can give him some motivation. Maybe they can work together. I'm looking forward to seeing that meeting. All in all, what an amazing chapter 300. A lot of potential moving forward for the next arc and whatever that will be. But let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. What do you think about Stain's return? Will he meet with All Might? And what do you think about Rey really taking charge and helping Endeavor redeem himself as a man, as a father, as the number one hero? Really want to hear your thoughts on this. And if you like My Hero Academia content and these chapter reviews, consider enrolling at UA today by subscribing. And until next time, hero or villain, plus ultra. Yeah.